Hey again everyone, this is Stellar Firefly and this video is a quick tutorial about how to access your server files on a GTX Gaming DayZ server. Getting access to your server files so that you may modify them or add to them is the very first step towards advanced customization of your server. We won't go over any of those advanced customizations here. The very number of things you could do will require lots and lots of different videos to cover them all. But for those of you who are just starting out on the road to add-ons and other server customizations, let's get you started with the basics. In this tutorial, we'll cover two ways to access your files on your GTX server. The TC Admin Control Panel's File Manager, and using File Transfer Protocol, also known as FTP. The File Manager method is good to use for its convenience, and because you don't need anything more than just your web browser to use it, but it does have its limitations. The FTP method is much more versatile, but you'll want to use a good FTP client of your choice. We'll use WinSCP for this tutorial, but any good FTP client should work just fine. First, let's take a look at the file manager. To access it, we just log into our TC Admin Control Panel, go to the usual Game Services section if necessary, and click on the File Manager icon. And boom, we're in. There's a hierarchical folder tree to the left, which works like we'd expect it would. Click on the plus or minus icons to open or close a branch, or click directly on a folder to open it. The file list on the right also works pretty much as expected. Click on a folder to open it. Clicking on a file, or clicking on the checkbox next to a file or folder, will select it. If we take a look at the area above these, we can see the basic operations that can be performed. We can upload a file to the current directory, create a new folder or a new file, or delete one or more files. The delete operation is where the checkboxes come into play. Clicking delete will delete all files and folders that we've selected. Of course, be very careful what you delete, or you may need to reinstall your entire server. Deletions cannot be undone. Besides these general operations, we can also see icons in the Actions column next to each file and folder. This text editing-like icon lets us rename a file or folder, and the globe icon lets us download a file to our own machine. The star icon marks the file as a favorite, but there doesn't seem to be any reason to mark files as favorites. If anybody knows what this is used for, then let me know. The real usefulness of the file manager comes with this pencil icon, which allows us to edit any text files, including many of the various configuration files for our DAISY server. Editing these files through the file manager is far more convenient than downloading them to our local machine, editing them ourselves, and then uploading them again. For example, in another one of my video tutorials, we covered how to edit the missions init.sqf file. We did that by navigating to MP Missions, then DAISY Epic 11 Chernaris, then finding the init.sqf file and clicking on the pencil icon next to it. That gives us our very own text editor to make any changes. Then we can click on the Save button at the very top to save them. The file manager is handy for when we want to quickly upload or update a single file at a time, but what if we want to work with large numbers or arbitrary selections of our server files? The best way to do that is through an FTP client, but first we need to grab our FTP connection information. If you recall the email that you received when you first signed up for your server, you may remember that your FTP connection info was included there. However, the actual connection info may change, in particular, the port number. It won't happen often at all, but it may. To get our latest FTP connection info, we'll head over to our TC Admin Control Panel and click on the FTP Login Info icon, then click OK when it asks to execute the script. After just a few seconds, we can see the most up-to-date connection info. So, if you ever find yourself unable to connect via FTP, then this is the first place to check, because it may have changed. For your FTP client, you could use any that you wish. I personally prefer WinSCP because of all the usual reasons. It's easy to use, it's powerful, and it's free. If you'd also like to use it, then head over to winscp.net and download and install the latest version. For the rest of this tutorial, we'll be showing the steps for WinSCP. But even if you use a different FTP client, the basics for using it will essentially be the same. Creating a new site entry is super easy when we know the connection info by selecting New Site on the left side. We set the file protocol to FTP with no encryption, which is the only protocol setting that GTX Gaming currently supports. For the host name, we use our IP address, and for the port number, we use our port number. We can specify both the username and password here as well, and if you don't, then it will ask you every time you try to connect. I recommend only saving the username here and typing in the password every time you reconnect, just for the extra security, but it's totally up to you. Then, press the Save button. You can give it any name you wish, so we'll call this one GTX Daisy Server. 
We can now connect to our server via FTP anytime by selecting it from the Save Sites list on the left and then pressing the Login button. Using WinSCP is easy and most other FTP clients will probably be similar. Your server's files and folders are on the right side and you can navigate around as you would expect. The left side shows your local system and you can just drag and drop files or even entire folders from one side to the other and vice versa. Want to grab your server PBO file and edit it locally? No problem, just go to where you want it on the left side, then find it on the right side, then just drag it over. WinSCP has a lot of other advanced features such as directory synchronization and a built-in editor and all sorts of cool stuff, but we won't spend too much time talking about it here. Feel free to check it out in more detail on your own. And that's it! With the ability to modify files and copy them to and from your server, you have the basics of being able to perform intermediate and advanced customizations. Just, of course, be careful of the changes that you make or you really can mess up your server as well. Always make backups, and if worse comes to worst, you can always just wipe it and reinstall from scratch, but your players may not like that a whole lot, so try not to mess it up quite that badly. Thank you all for watching. Please don't hesitate to like or subscribe if you feel so inclined, and keep an eye on this channel for future tutorials for doing some of those advanced things we keep mentioning. I hope this was helpful to some of you, and as always, good luck, have fun, and watch your back.